Welcome to my video on mastering the gamma matrices. If you follow along and work alongside me, I promise you will come out of this video just completely dominating the gamma matrices and you will be in a great position for your quantum field theory courses. So there are three different categories of problems that we will be solving. Let's of course begin with part one. So we will begin with the easiest and then move up. Now, please take into consideration that it is much better. This is going to work much better if you pause the video before I solve a problem and then you compare, or maybe if you are not sure, go along with me and the, try to think alongside me, even if you have to maybe copy it a little bit, but work alongside me. Don't just watch, also do. Okay, so let's begin with 1a. This problem says gamma mu dagger, right? The Hermitian conjugate of gamma mu. This is gamma zero, gamma mu, gamma zero. Now, this could of course also work if we have the indices up, right? It would still work. The procedure for all the problems that we will see, every single problem, you could also take the other position of the index. So for gamma mu up there, for example, instead of down there, and it will be perfectly valid, but of course you have to choose one of the two. <laughs> I'm not going to do the same thing twice if it is exactly the same. All right, so in this problem, what we will do is just separate our Greek index, right? We know that mu, it is a Greek index and Greek indices go from zero all the way to three. And Latin indices go from one to three. So this is I, J, K, and these are also, I don't know, rho, sigma, nu, lambda, you know, all sorts of possibilities. Uh, gamma, alpha, beta, you know, there's a lot of those and we will actually use many of them later on in the video. So what we'll do here is say, okay, let's prove this separately for the case gamma zero and also separately for the case gamma i. So basically for the case gamma zero and gamma one, gamma two, gamma three. However, gamma one, gamma two, gamma three, they behave very similarly. Why? Because those indices are related, right? The, the gamma matrices have properties that come from the Clifford algebra. Now the Clifford algebra, it is right here. This is the very important Clifford algebra. And you see that for any given gammas, right? Their behavior will be governed by the metric and particularly the mu nu element. And the metric, this is something very important you should know, is 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, and all of these are 0, 2. So you can see that the 0th element here is different from the i-th element. That is all of that. So that's why we make the, the this separation between 0 and i, because 0 has 1, i has minus 1, and that leads to quite different behavior. All right, so that's why we're doing it. And we, you will continue to see throughout this video why this relationship here, the Clifford algebra, is so important, right? That is the famous uh, Clifford algebra, right? That This single relationship here basically dictates everything, right? It tells you how everything behaves, and you will see that we will use it very often. Okay. So let's go back to the problem. So gamma zero dagger. Okay, well, in this case, let's actually go ahead and I, I will need some more space actually. And let's just write what gamma zero dagger is explicitly in some representation. So um, I personally would like to just use the representation that we have been using uh, so far. The Dirac representation is my favorite, but it doesn't matter which one you use. So in the Dirac representation, the gamma zero matrix is the two by two identity matrix, uh, two by two, zero, zero minus the two by two identity matrix. So we want to take the complex conjugate of this. However, to take the complex conjugate, what we have to do is transpose it and then take the complex conjugate of every single element. But transposing this gives us the exact same thing, right? Zero, zero minus the identity and taking the complex conjugate doesn't change anything because everything inside here is real. So this means that gamma zero dagger is gamma zero. Okay. And now we can manipulate this a little bit more and we will multiply by one. Okay, very important trick. We multiply by one. And why do we do it? Because we want to arrive at this expression, right? So for the case gamma zero, what we want is that we get the end result. So let's do it here. Gamma zero, gamma zero, gamma zero. That is what we should get, right? That is what we are trying to prove. 
So, so far we got this gamma zero, but we haven't really gotten anywhere else there. Okay, so how can we continue? Well, I multiply by one. Why? Because of the Clifford algebra. So let's go to the Clifford algebra and plug in mu and nu equal to zero. So if mu and nu are equal to zero, then gamma zero, gamma zero plus, right? This is the anti-commutator. Some people write the anti-commutator with uh, curly brackets. I am writing it with just these brackets, but with this plus sign right there, okay? So keep in mind, it's an anti-commutator, so we get plus. So gamma zero, gamma zero, plus gamma zero, gamma zero, is equal to two times the zero zeroth element of the matrix, of the uh, metric, which is this, right? One, minus one, minus, minus one, and a bunch of zeros. In the metric that I like to use. Some people use a different metric, and which is with the minus signs reversed. If you're using that, uh, well, then you're going to have the difference of a minus sign, but the result will be the same. Okay, so two times the zero zeroth element, which is this, so it is one, so just two. So we get two times gamma zero squared equal two. So this means gamma zero squared or gamma zero gamma zero is equal to one. Okay, so that means that instead of writing this one right here, right, instead of this, we can write gamma zero, gamma zero. Okay, so what next, right? Notice that what we want is gamma zero up there, gamma zero down here, gamma zero up there. Okay, so we have gamma zero down and up. So basically we want this zero to go down, this zero to go up. How can we go about raising and lowering indices? We have seen that before. So if we have some matrix, I don't know, let's say that we have a mu, right? And let's say that we want um, maybe to, or let's write like this. We have mu up here and we want to lower it. So in that case, we multiply by the metric mu nu. Okay, so in this case, actually, uh, this should be nu here. Okay, so a, a nu. So if we have an index up here and we want to lower it, then we need to multiply by the metric, but with the symbols down there. Of course, in the case of the metric, having the, the, the indices down or up is the same because it, has, it is a symmetric metric, as we saw in the first video of the, of the course. So that is how we can go about uh, lowering them and to raise them. Uh, well, it's the same. So a mu, this is simply eta mu nu, a nu. All right. So the, the nus, they cancel out. We say that they contract. So they disappear basically and you're left with a mu. All right. So in the case for the zero, then if we want to raise the, the zero or lower it. So let's say that we want to see, well, how do we get the gamma zero down here? Well, we need to multiply, right, eta, now mu nu, in this case, it is zero, zero. So zero, zero, uh, actually it's supposed to be down here, even though it doesn't really matter, zero, zero, and gamma zero. But what is eta zero, zero? Well, eta zero, zero is one. So this means gamma zero is gamma zero. It doesn't matter if you put the zero in the covariant or contravariant position, it's the same, right? And just to, to be thorough in the case for the gamma i's, we have eta, uh, let's here say maybe i, so there i i, maybe it would be the same, of course, I have to put this down here actually, even though again, uh, because of, of the fact that this particular metric is symmetric, it doesn't matter, but just to be thorough, we write it like this. But the etas i i, so eta one one, eta two two, eta two three, uh, sorry, three three, are all minus one. So if you want to change the position from up to down of any of these gammas i's, you need to add a minus sign, okay? So that's a very, very important thing that you should know, you have to know it, okay? So that's where it comes from. So that's just my justification for why I will move this zero up, move that other zero down, even though in principle you don't even have to do it because it is equivalent. But this way it is very, very, very apparent that we have achieved what we wanted, right? So we have already proven the case for gamma zero. Now we will do the same for, uh, sorry, for uh, mu equal to zero. Now we go for mu equal to i. So gamma i dagger, so now we just write the expression 
for our gamma eyes, which in the Dirac representation is zero sigma i, these are the Pauli matrices, minus sigma i, zero, and then we have complex conjugate. So here, actually, let me maybe erase this thing there because it's in the way. So now we will take, we transpose this. So we have zero minus sigma i, sigma i, but we still have to take the complex conjugate of each element. However, the Pauli matrices are Hermitian, right? That's one of the, the whole uh, point of the uh, Pauli matrices. So it's the same as its complex conjugate, so we can just get rid of it. So now we can factor out a minus sign, so we get minus zero sigma i minus sigma i zero, and we are left with exactly the same that we had at the beginning. So this is simply minus gamma i. Okay, but we want to have this written in the form gamma zero, gamma i, gamma zero. Okay, so that means that we need to fabricate some gamma zeros. So again, we can multiply by one because one is equal to gamma zero squared, so gamma zero, gamma zero. And now, well, can we just change the order? Hmm, can we do it? Let's go ask the Clifford Algebra. The Clifford Algebra is our Lord and Savior, okay? Everything you, you have to do in QFT, first you have to go consult the Clifford Algebra, okay? So let's see. What we now want to see is do gamma zero and gamma i commute? So gamma zero, gamma i, or rather anti commute, sorry. This is two eta zero i. Well, what is eta zero i? Let's go here. So zero i means that we are either here or here, depending if it's zero i or i zero. But either way, all those numbers are zero. So this right hand side is zero. So that means that gamma zero and gamma i anti-commute or writing out explicitly just to make sure that we are all on the same page. This means that gamma zero gamma i plus gamma i gamma zero is equal to zero, which means that gamma zero gamma i is equal to minus gamma i gamma zero. So this means that you can change the position of a gamma zero and a gamma i, but you have to uh, add a minus sign, okay? So that's what you have to do. So you have to, have to add a minus sign in front. So we can change this zero and this i, of course the i is still down here, zero, and we add a minus sign, which will cancel out the other minus sign. And there we go. This is precisely what we wanted. So now we have proven this expression in both the possible cases uh, where we have uh, i equal to, so mu equal to i and mu equal to zero. So that is uh, the part 1a. Now let's go to part 1b. We have a lot of ground to cover. So part b, now we want to show that sigma mu nu if we take the Hermitian conjugate, it's going to be gamma zero, sigma mu nu, gamma zero. Now you may be like, whoa, what's the sigma thing here? Well, the sigma is an anti-symmetric matrix that we defined in the previous video. It is one of the 16 gamma matrices. And this is I over two commutator of gamma. Well, if I wrote it down here, then it, it has to be like this, gamma mu, gamma nu, okay? And it is anti-symmetric, so this is equal to minus if you and you changing the the order of you of your indices. So that's what we have. So now we want to just show this thing right there. Okay, so let's go straight in. So sigma mu nu conjugate, this is i over two. And then let's write this out. Maybe let's not use a square parenthesis so that I don't confuse anybody. So gamma mu gamma nu minus gamma nu gamma mu and now i take the complex conjugate of this the the uh, the, the, the hermitian agent here and what do i get well let's see we get first of all minus i over two and then we apply the same operator to everything that is inside so if we do that we have to change the order of each one of these elements so we have gamma nu dagger then we get gamma mu dagger minus gamma mu dagger gamma nu dagger okay how do we proceed well we have already seen what gamma nu or gamma mu dagger is 
it is what we just saw here, right? It is gamma zero, gamma mu, gamma zero. So let's plug it in. So if we plug this in, we get minus i over two, and then we have gamma zero, gamma nu, gamma zero. This is from this part. Then we get gamma zero, gamma mu, gamma zero. This is from this part. Then we get minus gamma, uh, well, doesn't matter, but I'll write it like, like this. Gamma zero, gamma mu, gamma zero. Then we get gamma zero, gamma nu, gamma zero. So all I did was plug in what we found before, right? This is gamma mu, this is there. So now notice that we have a bunch of gamma zero, gamma zero, gamma zero, gamma zero. We know that those things are one, right? Gamma zero squared is equal to one. So this thing right there is one. This thing right here is one. Now notice that we are multiplying from the left by gamma zero here, from the left by gamma zero here, from the right by gamma zero, from the right by gamma zero. So we can factor out a gamma zero to each side. So gamma zero, gamma nu, gamma mu, minus gamma mu, gamma nu, gamma zero. Now we can put in the minus and just keep the gamma zero outside. So like this maybe, and we have i over two, gamma mu, gamma nu, minus gamma nu, gamma mu, gamma zero. And what we have inside is precisely sigma mu nu. This is sigma mu nu. So this entire thing is gamma zero, sigma mu nu, gamma zero. So now we know what happens to this gamma matrix when you take the Hermitian adjoint away, right? Okay, so that is part B. So let's now go to part C. So in part C, we have gamma five. So what we want to prove is that gamma five, which we have in the past written at least, there's several conventions. This is the convention that we have used. So this is what we have used in the past. We want to now show that it can also be written as minus i over four factorial times the four dimensional Levi Civita epsilon mu nu rho sigma times gamma mu, gamma nu, gamma rho, gamma sigma. All right. So that is what we want to prove now. What exactly is this four dimensional Levi Civita? So let's just write it down. So the Levi Civita symbol here is basically the same as in three dimensions, but of course now in four. And we are going to use the convention where epsilon. 0, 1, 2, 3 is equal to 1, and this is equal to minus the value for epsilon 0, 1, 2, 3, uh, sorry, 0, 1, 2, 3, right? So this basically means that epsilon 0, 1, 2, 3, this will be minus 1 in this convention, okay? So that's the convention that we're using. Now, let's go for just epsilon mu nu, uh, we are using rho sigma here. So what is the value of this? Well, the value of this is either one, minus one, or zero. If any of these indices are repeated, so if we have epsilon one, one, two, three, for example, or something like that, then we get zero. So that's for repeated indices. If we have any even permutation of zero, one, two, three, which we know is one, we also get one, so even permutation. So for example, if we have epsilon and we move zero twice, and we get one, two, zero, three, then we get one. But if we have an odd number of permutations, so for example, if we have epsilon one, zero, two, three, then we get minus one. Okay, and note that this is for the case where we have the indices upstairs, so up there. So for the lower case, we always have the, the opposite sign. Instead of one, we get minus one. Instead of minus one, we get one, okay? So that is the convention that we are using. So using that, let's now try to solve this. So this is quite simple. Keep in mind that whenever we have mu here, mu there in different positions, this is an implicit sum because of what we call the Einstein convention. So let's just write this implicit sum explicitly. So we have minus i over four factorial, and then we have sum over mu, which goes from zero to three, sum over nu, which goes from zero to three, sum over rho, which goes from zero to three, 
sum over sigma, which goes from zero to three, of epsilon mu nu rho sigma gamma mu gamma nu gamma rho gamma sigma. Okay, so now we just have to sum through. Now it would be a huge amount of terms if we don't realize that every single term where there is any repeated number between mu, nu, rho, and sigma will be zero. So if we go for, for example, zero, 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 well, that's simply zero. Zero, 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 one is zero. Zero, 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 two is zero. All those are zero. So we will only write terms where none of the uh, indices are repeated. So the first one would be zero, one, two, three, right? No repeated ones. And if mu is zero here, mu is zero here. Nu is one, rho is two, and sigma is three. Plus, now comes the next possibility. So this one, by the way, has zero permutation. So we will keep in mind that this has a value of minus one because of the convention that we're using. You may have seen other conventions. It doesn't matter. Then we have epsilon and we will do one permutation. So we get one, zero, two, three. So this is one permutation. Then we have gamma one, gamma zero, gamma two, gamma three. So notice that there is one permutation here as well. Now we go for two permutations, epsilon one, two, zero, three. So that's two permutations and we get gamma one, gamma two, gamma zero, gamma three. Now we go for four permutations. So we go, uh, sorry, three permutations. So we get one, two, three, zero and gamma one, gamma two, gamma three, gamma zero. So this time we used three permutations. And I will just do one more um, to help you see the pattern. So this is epsilon. Now let's do one more permutation. Let's take the zero all the way to the left. So that, uh, no, or rather the one all the way to the right. Otherwise we are going to begin exactly where we ended. So let's now do it like, uh, two, three, zero, one. So this now has four permutations. And this is gamma two, gamma three, gamma zero, and gamma one, plus, etc. Okay, so now notice that what we have right here is simply zero permutations, and we defined this to be minus one, right? So we defined this to be minus. Then we have one permutation, which we defined to be plus. Right, going back to what we have here, when the indices were up there, it was one when even, minus one were odd, but the when they are down here, it's always the opposite sign. Okay, so that's the way that we define this. So now we go to this expression. Notice that we had first gamma zero, gamma one, gamma two, gamma three, but now we have gamma one, gamma zero. So the order of those two are inverted. So we can go to the Clifford algebra once again, our best friend, and keep in mind that you can always change the order of gamma zero and any gamma i, i being one, two, three, by just adding a minus sign uh, to the front. So that's what we are going to be doing. So, well, let's just add a minus sign. So we get minus, and we change the order of those two. So zero, one. Now we go to the next one. So here we have two permutations, which means we get a minus sign. So we get minus. And now we need to change the order twice. We need to move gamma zero twice. Use two anti-commutation relations, which gives us two times minus. So we end up with a minus again. So we get uh, zero, one, two, three. So notice that we are getting always the same thing, right? Minus the same sum of gammas. Now here we have three permutation that gives us a plus. And then we have to move gamma zero three times, which gives us three minus signs, which means minus. So this is now gamma zero, I can't click, zero, one, two, three. Then we have four permutations. Now four permutations means a minus sign in front. And now we want to commute, let's see. So first gamma zero, we have to move it twice. That gives us two minus signs, so we have zero, two, three, but now we need to move gamma one. So how do, how does gamma one anti-commute with the other gammas? So let's ask our beautiful friend, the Clifford algebra. So if we have gamma i and gamma j, and we want to know whether or not they anti-commute, we just plug them in. So gamma i times gamma j plus gamma j gamma i, 
this is equal to 2 eta i j. Now notice that i and j are not the same because we are looking at the case 0, 1, uh, sorry, not 0, 1, 2, 3. They are not the same, otherwise the levich vida would be 0, the symbol, so we are not looking at that case. Now all the i, j's are 0, right? If you go to 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 3, uh, 2, 1, uh, 3, 1, 3, 2, all the positions in our uh, matrix here are 0, because they are not on the diagonal. Okay, so that means that the right hand side here is zero. So that's zero. So that means that gamma i gamma j is equal to minus gamma j gamma i. So you can anti-commute them. Okay. So we can do it here and we have to do it twice, right? Once to put, go in this position, once to go in that position. So this is 1, 2, 3, and we get two minus signs, which means we still have a negative in front. So what you see here is that we get always the exact same thing. So we always get gamma 0, gamma 1, oh, I missed the gamma 2 there, gamma 2, gamma 3, we always get that. The question is, well, how many times? Well, if epsilon mu nu rho sigma is what we are using, we only have four possible values, so four, and they cannot repeat. So we have 4 in the first position, right? It can be 0, 1, 2, 3, but then it can no longer be whatever that is. So now we only have three possibilities. Then we have only two possibilities and then one possibility. So we have four factorial possibilities. So that means that when we add them together, we have minus i over 4 factorial times minus 4 factorial, gamma 0, gamma 1, gamma 2, gamma 3, and the negative signs cancel out, the factorials cancel out, and we get that gamma 5 is equal to this, which is precisely what we had defined. Okay, so now we know that if we want to write down a gamma 5 in a more general expression, we can use that one right there. So that is uh, part C. Let's now move on to part D. So part D was asking us to prove the following. So it says prove that gamma 5 squared is equal to 1. Okay, so that's what we're going to be doing. Now this is well going to be relatively straightforward. Let's just plug in gamma 5. So this would be i gamma 0, gamma 1, gamma 2, gamma 3 times i gamma 0, gamma 1, gamma 2, gamma 3. So of course there are always several ways to solve this. Uh, this is just one of them. This is the first one that came to mind. Now let's just commute everything a few times. So let's put the gamma 0 next to the other gamma 0. So in order for us to do that, we need to commute it three times, right? Once here, whoops, sorry, I, once there, once there, and once there. So three times. So we get three, min three minus signs. And we have another minus sign because we have i squared. So minus 1 again. And then we have gamma 0, gamma 0, gamma 1, gamma 2, gamma 3, gamma 1, gamma 2, gamma 3. And gamma 0 squared, we already know, is 1. And this thing is 1 as well. Now let's move the gamma 1. So the gamma 1, we need to move it once here and once there. So we get two minus signs. So we end up with gamma 1 squared gamma 2, gamma 3, gamma 2, gamma 3. Now what is gamma 1 squared? Or let's do it in general for any gamma i. Well, we go back to the Clifford algebra, right, which is uh, gamma mu, gamma nu is the anti-commutator is equal to two times the metric mu nu, that are the mu nu element of the metric. All right, so for the case gamma i, gamma i, when they are the same, we get gamma i, gamma i plus gamma i gamma i, this is equal to two times eta i i. But the metric we know is 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, minus 1, 0, 0, minus 1, 0, 0, minus 1, 0, 0. So all the i i's, which go from 1 to 3, are these three elements. So they are all minus 1. So this is always minus 2. And this is equal to 2 times gamma i squared. So that means that gamma i squared is equal to minus 1 in all cases. So using this and going back up here, we get that this is minus gamma 2, gamma 3, 
gamma 2, gamma 3, we can now change the position of these two and I commute them. So we end up with another minus sign and gamma 2, gamma 2, gamma 3, gamma 3. Gamma 2 squared is minus 1, gamma 3 squared is minus 1, so we get minus minus 1 or 1. And there we go, we just proved that gamma 5 squared is equal to 1. Okay, so let's now go for part E. So 1E, which is the last problem of part 1, is uh, it asks us to do the following. It says prove that gamma 5 gamma mu dagger is equal to gamma 0, gamma 5, gamma mu, gamma 0. So that is what they are asking of us. So um, let's just go ahead and apply the dagger operator. So this thing, or maybe let's write like this. So this gives us gamma mu dagger, gamma 5 dagger. Now we already know what gamma mu dagger is, but what is gamma 5 dagger? So let's quickly calculate this. So gamma 5 dagger, well, we know that gamma 5 is, well, it depends on uh, your your uh, representation. Again, you can choose different ones, but you will get the same result. I will choose i, gamma 0, gamma 1, gamma 2, gamma 3, which is the same as before. And now we dagger this. So upon daggering it, we get minus because of the i, and then we reverse order. So gamma 3 dagger, gamma 2 dagger, gamma 1 dagger, gamma 0 dagger. Okay. Um, but we know that we know what gamma mu dagger is, right? So gamma 3 dagger is gamma 0, gamma 3, gamma 0. Gamma 2 dagger is gamma 0, gamma 2, gamma 0. Gamma 1 dagger is gamma 0, gamma 1, gamma 0. Gamma 0 dagger is gamma 0, gamma 0, gamma 0. Okay. And oh, I left out the i, so of course it is minus i, not just minus, so minus i. My bad. Okay, so now we can simply uh, cancel a few things. We know that gamma 0 squared is 1, so this is 1, this is 1, this is 1. Now I will leave an additional gamma 0. Um, actually, no, I don't need to do that. Never mind, I'll just take it. I didn't say anything. Okay, and now we have gamma 0, gamma 3, gamma 2, gamma 1. So let's start anti-commuting. So let's take the gamma 1, move it once, move it twice. So we get two minus signs. So we get minus i, gamma 0, gamma 1, gamma 2, gamma 3. And then we have, uh, sorry, this is not gamma 2, gamma 3, this is gamma 3, gamma 2. So gamma 3, gamma 2. And now we anti-commute these two ones. So we get another minus sign and i, gamma 0, gamma 1, gamma 2, gamma 3, which is exactly gamma 5. Okay, so we can see that gamma 5 is the same as gamma 5 dagger. It is her mission. Okay, so that's one way of seeing it. Uh, I guess you could have just multiplied through and taken a look at the matrix as well, but this way we can get to play around with the properties. So that means that here we have gamma 0, gamma mu, gamma 0, and then we have gamma 5. Okay, so now we can simply see, well, what happens with gamma 0 and gamma 5? Right? Can we commute them, anti-commute them? Um, how does that work? And can we commute gamma 5 and gamma mu? Because what we want is for gamma 5 to be there, right? That's, uh, that's what we're looking for. You can see it right, right here. So we need to figure out, and that's actually part one of the, or A of part two, right? Problem A of part two is we need to know whether or not gamma five and gamma mu anti-commute. So let's just take a moment to do this. This is, so actually this is a part two A, which we are kind of solving in between. So what we have here, then this is simply gamma five, gamma mu plus gamma mu gamma 5 and we want to know what this is. So here we will once again have to divide this into parts so mu equals 0 and then 1 2 3 right so that's what we will do. So in the case for mu equals 0 we get gamma 5 gamma 0 plus gamma 0 gamma 5 but what is gamma 5 we already know that it is in our representation, it's i, gamma 0, gamma 1, gamma 2, gamma 3, and then we have the gamma 0, plus gamma 0, gamma 
uh, so sorry, i first, gamma zero, gamma one, gamma two, gamma three. Now notice that we have different indices in our zero and just overall in our mu, one is up, one is down. So just to be very clear, we can move one up and down, right, using the metric, as I, we talked at the beginning of, of the video. So what we can do is, just to make sure that we are very clear, let's put everything together either up or down. It is faster to put everything up. We know that gamma, well, that's not a gamma, uh, gamma zero is the same as gamma zero, right? Covariant and contravariant, uh, so covariant and contravariant are the same. So we can just put it up. And now we can anti-commute them the way that we are used to. So let's see. We can move gamma zero one, two, three times, which gives us three minus signs. So we get minus i gamma zero squared, which is one. So, well, we don't have to write it down. And then we have gamma one, gamma two, gamma three plus, and then we have gamma zero squared right away. So we get i gamma one, gamma two, gamma three. So this thing is zero. Okay, so for the case mu equal to zero, these matrices gamma five, gamma zero, anti-commute. Now, what about the gamma i's? Now, I will just give you um, the, the case for mu equal one. The case for two and three are identical. Actually, all of them are identical, but there's a slight change in between zero and one. So that's why I'm showing you this case as well. So gamma five, gamma one plus gamma one, gamma five. This is i gamma zero gamma one gamma two gamma three gamma one plus gamma one and then an i which i will put in front gamma zero gamma one gamma two gamma three now just like before let's raise the index we can do that by putting a minus in the front right we talked about it at the beginning of the video if you're unsure um then that means that you skipped something and you shouldn't have done that. So if you're unsure, then go watch from the beginning because I mean it when this video is very complete, we will always be building on what we have already seen. So no skipping. <laughs> okay, um, so now the main differences, let's see. We can anti-commute gamma one and gamma zero there, which gives us another minus sign. Uh, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. And this is zero and one. So zero and one, then we have gamma one squared, which we know is minus one. So we get another minus sign there. And similarly here, we can move gamma one, let's see, once, twice. So that gives us two minus signs. And then we get, so minus i gamma zero, gamma one squared, which is minus one. So it cancels out with this. So i gamma zero, gamma two, gamma three, minus i gamma zero gamma two gamma three which is also zero and well similarly you can do it for mu equal two and three but you can already see that it's going to be the same right there is no difference between gamma one gamma two and gamma three they are exactly the same so we will get the same result that's why there's really no point doing it um if it's like an assignment for your teacher sure do it but you're doing the same thing three times that's why i'm not bothering with it um, because it's literally the same, there is no difference. Okay, so what we see here is that gamma 5 and gamma mu anti-commute. So that means that you can change the order, right? If you have gamma 5, gamma mu, you can write this as minus gamma mu, gamma 5, right? And we also saw the specific case that gamma 5 can uh, also anti-commute with gamma 0. So now all we need to do is figure out where we were here. So this is what we were doing. We were trying to show this thing right here, right? We were trying to show that gamma five, gamma mu dagger is gamma zero, gamma five, gamma mu, gamma zero. All right, so that's where we were at. So now what we need to do is anti-commute gamma five, gamma zero, which we know we can do. This is going to be gamma five. This is going to be gamma zero. And we put a minus sign in front. And now we anti-commute gamma mu and gamma five we put another minus sign in front, but that one cancels out this one, so we get plus, and now we have exactly the same as there, right? We have the, exactly the same thing. So there we go, we have um, already solved part 1e. And <laughs> in doing that, we also solved part 2a, so yay us, I guess. And now we have to continue with part two. So maybe let's take 
this and just move it to the side so that I have some more room far away from part A, which is now in the past. So let's now go ahead with part 2B. So here we want to find the commutator, not anti-commutator, of gamma 5, sigma, mu, nu. Right, so this has to be equal to zero. So this is the commutator of gamma 5, i over 2, gamma mu, gamma nu. Keep in mind there's always uh, several different ways uh, of doing this. Now I do recommend that uh, you just try to do this in, in the simplest way possible, but keep in mind there's always uh, a lot of ways of doing this. So um, here we can write this as gamma 5, we can factor out the i over 2, gamma 5 comma gamma mu gamma nu minus gamma nu gamma mu. Okay, now we know that because of the properties of commutators, we can separate this commutator. So we can separate this into i over 2 factor of, and then we have gamma 5, actually maybe let's use a different parenthesis so that it doesn't get confused with the commutator. So this would be the commutator of gamma 5 and gamma mu gamma nu minus the commutator of gamma 5 down here and gamma nu gamma mu. So that is what we want to calculate. So now let's just multiply it through so we get i over 2 and then we have gamma 5, gamma mu, gamma nu, minus gamma mu, gamma nu, gamma 5. And then we have minus gamma 5, gamma nu, gamma mu, minus minus, so plus gamma nu, gamma mu, gamma 5. But keep in mind, as we just saw, that gamma 5 and any gamma mu anti-commute. Right, so, and by mu, I mean any in general, right? It doesn't matter if you now called it nu. It commutes with gamma mu and gamma nu and gamma rho and gamma lambda. It, it's the same, right, with any gamma. So that means that here we can move this gamma 5 there, for example, and we get two minus signs. So that means plus. So we get gamma mu, gamma nu, gamma 5, which is exactly the same as this. So those two cancel out, this and this cancel out, right? So no worry about that part. And then here we can do something similar. We can commute the gamma 5 once, twice, anti-commuted, sorry. So we get two minus signs. So we get minus gamma nu, gamma mu, gamma 5, which is the same as this, opposite sign, they cancel out. So we get zero. So that means that this first part, well, there we go. It's, it's, it's proven. They do indeed commute. So now the next part, part 2c, we want to prove that a slash squared is equal to a squared. So we want to prove that, this is part c, a slash squared is equal to a squared. So now keep in mind, a slash is what we called a mu gamma mu, that's a slash, but now we have two different ones, so we have to use different labels, so a nu gamma uh, let's say new again, right? Otherwise we are <laughs> not really uh, doing it particularly well. So there we go. Now this is very important. So a mu is a vector, right? Keep in mind, we have done it, for example, for momentum. This was simply uh, p mu uh, gamma mu, and this is a vector. So it's mu element is also, it's just a number. Right, so a mu and a nu, these are numbers. This is, I don't know, like two, it depends what quantity we're measuring. If it's a momentum, it's going to be two units of momentum, whatever they may be, or two units of whatever, right? So if it's for velocity, it's going to be velocity or whatever. So the point is that they are numbers. So that means that we can commute them. They are numbers. So we can write this as a mu, a nu, and this is going to be gamma mu, gamma nu. All right. Now the question is, well, what do we do now, right? Because, well, we don't really know much about gamma mu, gamma nu. What do we do there? Well, now we're going to do the exact same thing because we were very arbitrary in terms of choosing what to call mu and what to call nu. We could have very well have done something like this. Say, okay, this is a new 
gamma nu times a mu gamma mu. We could have done that as well. And then we just put the a's to the front and we get a nu a mu gamma nu gamma mu. And these are numbers, we can commute them, so we can write them in the same order as before, so mu and nu. And now we have these two equations, right? We have a slash is equal to this, and a slash is equal to this. So we can add them together, so we get 2 times a slash is equal to the sum of these two parts. So that means a mu a nu gamma mu gamma nu plus a mu a nu gamma nu gamma mu so let's factor out the a's so gamma mu gamma nu plus gamma nu gamma mu what is this what is this what is this parenthesis you have to know this if not go look at it right now look it up this is the clifford algebra relation right we know that that quantity right there um, there is 2 times eta mu nu, right? So uh, the 2's cancel out, they cancel out, and now we can rearrange the position of eta. These two are numbers, eta mu nu is a number, as we have seen before. It is the, I don't know, 1, 1 element of the matrix, which is, for in this case, 1, 1 would be minus 1, right? It is any element of the matrix. So this means we can rearrange it and write it as eta mu nu, a mu a nu, but since it is symmetric, we can also write this down here just to make this very clear. And now what this does is that it's going to lower the index mu and change it for nu, right? Because they cancel out, right? The mu's cancel out, we say they contract. So um, what we get is going to be a nu, a nu right so and why exactly does that happen let me show you so if a mu is what we say i don't know like a zero so up there a zero a one a two and a three and we are now multiplying it by eta mu nu what we are doing is saying okay so take uh, one zero 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 minus one zero zero minus one zero minus one, zero, 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 zero. And we multiply this by this, um, we get, let's see, one times a zero, so we get a, a zero. So this would be uh, this times that right there. Then we get minus a one, minus a two, minus a three. And this is precisely uh, what we defined as a lower case, right? But in this case, uh, the mu has now been cancelled out. It remains with the name new. Uh, there we go. So if you are not sure, do go back to the first lecture of my of QFD that I have here in my channel because we went into it a bit more deeply, right? So uh, this would be the same as a zero, a one, a two, a three, right? So that's basically what we have. So. The whole point of this is just to show you that what we have is the inner product of a with itself, which is simply the magnitude of a squared. Okay, so that's what we wanted, that's what we got. So we just proved 2c. Now 2d, we want to show that gamma mu gamma mu is equal to 4. Okay, so how do we do it? So d gamma mu gamma mu is equal to 4. That's what we want to prove. So how can we solve this? Well, if we have this gamma mu gamma mu, we can rewrite this as gamma nu gamma mu, but we multiply in front by eta mu nu. Why? Because we what we want to do is get to our very good friend, you guessed it, the Clifford algebra. We want to get to something that like gamma mu gamma nu this is the anti-commutator uh, two times eta mu nu right and just to make this very clear the anti-commutator is gamma mu gamma nu plus gamma nu gamma mu so that we want to get to something like that all right so 
Here we have done a little bit, right? We have done a little bit of work. So Itamunu is now this. But now notice that Itamunu is exactly the same as Ita Nu Mu, right? It's exactly the same. Why? Well, because it is a symmetric matrix, right? If you choose the element 1, 2, it is the same as the element 2, 1, right? And the same for every single element. So that means that we can now write this as one half of eta mu nu plus eta mu nu gamma nu gamma mu, right? So that's all I've done. I said, okay, so this is two times and divided by two. And I just separated it. And now I'm going to write the second one as nu mu. Okay, and why do I do it? Because now I can let each one of these act on a different one of these uh, expressions here. So for example, one half, and now I have eta mu nu gamma nu gamma mu plus eta nu mu gamma nu gamma mu. But now notice that each one of these terms is completely independent of the other in terms of labels, right? Because both of these labels indices will cancel out with both of the indices in, in gamma, right? They will contract, not really cancel out. So in the end, there will be no dependence on mu or nu or anything like that. So that means that we can simply choose to relabel the expression on the right. So not this one, the one on the right. So the one on the right, we can just change mu and nu. So where there is a nu, I write mu. So mu. And when there was a nu, now I write mu. Uh, yeah, mu. So that means that this mu is now nu. So there we go. And this nu is now mu. And this mu is now nu. It's maybe a little confusing, but notice I just changed. Right? Every nu went to mu and every mu went to nu. I just changed them because they are dummy variables, right? It doesn't matter. It's just a name. I just changed the names. But now what we have here, look at this. This is one half of eta mu nu, which I'm gonna factor out of gamma mu, gamma nu, right? This one plus gamma nu, gamma mu, this one, which is precisely the Clifford algebra relation, right? The anti commutator that defines the Clifford algebra. So we know that that is two times eta mu nu. So the twos cancel out and we have eta mu nu, eta mu nu. So what do we get when we multiply these two matrices, right? Now there are several ways to look at this. You can look at this as the sum of mu is equal to zero to three and sum of nu is equal to zero to three of eta mu nu, eta mu nu. So you can just go ahead and say, okay, zero, zero. So eta zero, zero, eta zero, zero, plus eta and every, every other one, but you know that you only have non-zeros in the diagonal. So this is one, one, eta one, one, plus eta two, two times eta two, two, and then times a uh, plus eta three, three, eta three, three. So this product is simply one times one, minus one times minus one, minus one times minus one, minus one times minus one. So you end up with four. You could also have just written down each one of your matrices and multiplied, which is actually exactly what we did here. And you end up with four as well. So whichever way you want to see it, uh, we end up with the result that this entire thing is indeed four. Okay, so now let's go to the next uh, problem, which is, let's see, it is that gamma mu, okay, so let me write it down. So 2e asks us to prove that gamma mu, gamma nu, gamma mu is equal to minus two times the gamma in the middle, right? So that's what we want to prove here. Okay, so how do we go about it? Well, this is now a point where we will use something very, very useful. And that is that we will use the Clifford algebra, you guessed it. So gamma mu, what is the gamma nu gamma mu, right? We know that 
gamma mu gamma nu plus gamma nu gamma mu is equal to two times eta mu nu. So we can just rewrite this expression. So gamma nu gamma mu, this is going to be the same as two times eta mu nu minus gamma mu gamma nu. Okay, so let's now calculate this. So on the left hand side, we have two eta mu nu gamma mu, right? We can commute these two because of the fact that eta mu nu is simply a number. Then we have minus gamma mu gamma mu gamma nu. Okay, so in the first part, what we have is a raising of the index. So we have two times gamma nu. Right? As we have seen many times over, this raises the index. Then we have minus this expression, which we just saw what it is. It is 4. So that's minus 4 gamma nu. So in the end, we get minus 2 gamma nu. There we go. Easy peasy. Next one. Let's just quickly, bam, one after the other. Keep, keep in mind uh, to always pause and try this for yourself. So 2f, what we now want to prove is that gamma mu gamma alpha, gamma beta, gamma mu is equal to four times the metric alpha beta element. <laughs> okay, so what do we do now? Well, notice that if we had something like this, right, gamma mu down here, then something that is not gamma mu and then another gamma mu, then we could use the property that we just found. So let's anti-commute gamma beta and gamma mu. How do we do that? The Clifford algebra, once again, you are indeed correct. Exactly the same thing that we just did, right? This expression right here. I, I was not kidding. The, the Clifford algebra is super important. I, I really was not kidding. So gamma alpha, and then instead of this, I have two times eta beta mu minus gamma mu gamma beta. It's the same that we did before, but now, of course, our labels are a bit different. Now let's multiply through. So this is equal, equal gamma mu gamma alpha times two eta beta mu. I could have moved it to the front. I probably should have, but whatever. Minus, and then we have gamma mu gamma alpha gamma mu gamma beta. Okay, so the first part, what is this? So here we can move this thing to the front. So we get two eta beta mu gamma mu gamma alpha. And then we have this expression, which is exactly what we just showed in part E, that it is minus two times the matrix in the middle. So this is minus two times. So we get plus two times the matrix in the middle, which is the gamma alpha times gamma beta. Okay. All right, what else? Then we have uh, two eta beta mu. So here we multiply through, so we get two times. And what this does is it raises the index uh, and then we are left with gamma beta alpha plus two times gamma alpha gamma beta. Sorry, this is gamma beta gamma alpha. And what is this? Well, look at this. If we factor out a two and just rearrange it, gamma alpha gamma beta plus gamma beta gamma alpha. This is the Clifford algebra. So this is simply two times two eta alpha beta. So simply four times eta alpha beta, which is exactly what we wanted to prove. There we go. Easy peasy. Let's now go for G. So G. This is gamma mu, gamma alpha, gamma beta, gamma gamma, right? So <laughs> there, are, there are only so many letters in the Greek alphabet, so you know we have to make do. So this has to be equal to minus two gamma gamma, gamma beta, gamma alpha. So that's what we want to prove. So basically, if you put two gamma matrices of the same kind uh, in, in the ends of three gamma matrices, you get those three gamma matrices, but in reverse order, instead of alpha, beta, gamma, you get gamma, beta, alpha, and a minus two in front. So that's what we are basically proving. How do we do it? Well, like before, this is kind of similar to what we had. In the previous case, we had two matrices in between, not three. But if we 
anti-commute these two matrices, we can get to a point where we can use the result of the previous part. So let's do that. So we get gamma, sorry, that's not a gamma. So we get gamma mu, gamma alpha, gamma beta, and now we anti-commute those two. So this would be gamma, sorry, right, this would be two eta, and then gamma mu minus, and then we have gamma mu, gamma gamma. Okay, so let's multiply through. So here we multiply through, so we get two eta gamma mu, I'm just putting it in front because it is simply a number, minus gamma mu, gamma alpha, gamma beta, uh, gamma mu, gamma gamma. Okay, so what else do we have? So notice now here what we have is exactly what we saw in the previous uh, part, right? That's exactly, precisely what we saw here. So if we have gamma mu, gamma mu, and in the middle two matrices, this is four times eta alpha beta. So that's four times eta alpha beta. So this thing right here is two times, well, let's do that part first. So here we get two gamma, gamma, gamma alpha, gamma beta, minus, and this time, okay, I already forgot what it is. Uh, I'm just looking up my notes. This is a uh, four times eta alpha beta times gamma gamma. All right, so that is what we have right there. Now here we can factor out two times and then we factor out gamma gamma, right? It is multiplying from the left in both cases, so gamma gamma. And then we have gamma alpha gamma beta minus two times eta alpha beta. And now this may uh, look a little bit more interesting if we also factor out a minus sign. So we get minus two times gamma gamma times, and now because of the minus sign, we get two times eta alpha beta minus gamma alpha gamma beta. Now this is exactly the Clifford algebra once again. And in this case, this is gamma beta gamma alpha, right? Um, because of the fact, just a quick reminder, gamma alpha, gamma beta plus gamma beta gamma alpha is equal to two times eta alpha beta, right? So we had this minus this, so what we got was that. All right, so that means we get minus two times gamma 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 beta gamma alpha, which if I recall correctly is exactly what we wanted. Yes, we want to show uh, that it is minus two gamma 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 beta gamma alpha. So yes, indeed, uh, we get uh, the same, we get the three matrices in the middle, but with reversed order. So that is uh, part 2G. Let's now go for part 2H. So this part asks us to show that sigma mu nu, sigma mu nu is equal to 12. So how do we go about this? Well, let's just plug in what sigma are, what sigma is. So uh, i over two, and then we have gamma mu, gamma nu, comma, uh, not comma, I'm just multiplying it already. So gamma nu, gamma mu, right? Because of the fact, never forget, sigma mu nu is equal to i over two, anti uh, sorry, regular commutator of gamma mu, gamma nu, and the same thing for the, for the lower indices, but everything in the lower index times i over two, gamma mu, gamma nu, minus gamma nu, gamma mu. Okay, so let's now multiply it through. We get minus one over four, and then, well, we get gamma mu, gamma nu, gamma mu, gamma nu, minus gamma mu, gamma nu, gamma nu, gamma mu, minus gamma nu, do not get confused. Okay, so take your time, don't get, uh, don't write mu instead of nu or something by mistake, that would be very annoying. Gamma nu, gamma mu, gamma nu, gamma mu. Okay, so <laughs> the quality of my drawing is slowly reducing, I'm sorry. So what do we do here? Well, notice what we have. 
we have gamma mu up there, gamma mu in here, and just, you know, a, a, a gamma nu in the middle. But we already know what that is. We have already proved it in one of the previous parts. I think it was part A or something. Let me go back to the... Actually, I think we have it somewhere over here, right? Somewhere over here and here. So we know gamma mu, gamma nu. Gamma mu, for example, here, that is minus 2 gamma nu, right? In, in the case that I just showed you, the indexes are reversed. So we have mu up here and mu down there, uh, but it still holds true. Right? All of these hold true for different uh, locations of the index, whether up or down, uh, it still holds true. So for that reason, uh, where were we? Let me just find ourselves again here. So for that reason, sigma mu nu, sigma mu nu, here, let's see, we get minus 1 over 4, and then here we have gamma mu, gamma nu, gamma mu. So this is simply minus 2 times gamma nu, gamma nu. Then we have mu nu, this is mu, this is nu, this is nu, this is mu. So that means nu times gamma nu, gamma nu, that is 4. This is 4, so we get minus 4 times gamma mu gamma mu, but this is also 4, so we get minus 16, so minus 16. Then here in the middle, we have again gamma mu gamma mu, so this is 4, so we have minus 4 gamma nu gamma nu, which is also 4, so we have again 16. Then we have this right here, where we can do the same thing as before, we have nu mu nu, so this is minus 2 times gamma mu, gamma mu, using the previous result from part A, 2A. Uh, sorry, not 2A, but rather 2E, 2E. So this is from 2E. So this thing right here, gamma mu, gamma mu, is also 4. This is 4, so we end up with minus 1 over 4. And we have minus 8, minus 8, minus 16, minus 16. What is this? Minus 32, minus 48. Yes, it's minus 48. And then we divide by 4 and the minus sign. So this is 12. There we go. Next one. Quick, 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 quick. No time to lose. No time to waste. So next one, uh, we have to prove that. So this is I. Gamma mu, gamma 5, gamma mu, gamma 5. This is equal uh, to minus 4. That's what we now want to prove. Okay, so, well, how do we go about it? Well, we know that gamma 4 and gamma 5 anti-commute, right? We have proven that already. So we can write this as gamma 5, or rather minus gamma 5, gamma mu, gamma mu, gamma 5. So what this is, this is minus 4 times gamma 5, gamma 5, but gamma 5, gamma 5, this, uh, this thing is 1, so, well, this is minus 4. So that one was quite quick. Now, the next one is G, so part 2G, where we want to prove that sigma alpha beta times gamma mu sigma alpha beta is equal to 0. So that is what we now want to prove. So, well, let's get to it. So let's just begin by plugging in what the sigmas are. So one half gamma alpha gamma beta minus gamma beta gamma alpha. And then we have times gamma mu and then times gamma alpha gamma beta minus gamma beta gamma alpha. Okay. So let's take a look at what we have. So this is equal to i over 2. Oh, and there's an i over 2 missing here. So we end up actually with minus 1 over 4. So minus 1 over 4. And then we have gamma alpha, gamma beta, gamma mu, gamma alpha, gamma beta. OK. And then we have the next one, which is minus gamma alpha, gamma beta, gamma mu, gamma 
beta gamma alpha. And then we have the next one, which is minus, actually, maybe I shouldn't have closed the parentheses there, minus gamma beta gamma alpha gamma mu gamma alpha gamma beta. And then we have plus gamma beta gamma alpha gamma mu gamma beta gamma alpha. So here what we have to do is just constantly use the properties that we have already found. So for example, here we have alpha alpha and two matrices in between. Or rather, maybe let's do... Yeah, I think alpha alpha is a pretty reasonable one to do. So when we had two matrices in between and we had one up, one up and one down, we had that the result, so minus one over four, was four times eta and then of the indices that were in the middle. So what we found is that this would be four times eta beta mu, right? Using the result from part F. And then we still have uh, this gamma beta. Okay, so actually uh, in this case, these indices have to be lowered because uh, the indices in these matrices are uh, the other way around from what we did previously. So um, that way it is uh, indeed the way that we expected it to be. Then here, what we can go for is minus gamma alpha and then we have beta beta with another matrix in the middle and we have seen what that is. Let me go through the notes. That would be minus two times, so we get plus two times, then that matrix in the middle. So that would be gamma mu and well, <laughs> that's it. And then we still have the gamma alpha. And then we have this part right here where we have minus gamma beta and this thing is the same so again minus two so we get plus two gamma mu gamma beta and then finally we have this part where we have plus let's see now we have again two matrices in the middle so those two matrices would be um, that gives us let me check the notes again so that's four eta alpha mu of actually it is now with the alpha mu down here even though it's the same uh, but just to be consistent because now our initial indices were in the oppos opposite uh, position as before opposite all right so now we still have this gamma alpha there okay i believe that that is um what what we had and now let's see so this is minus one fourth and here, what do we have? So for eta beta mu, this means four times gamma mu. We are simply lowering the index. Then here, what is this? This is minus two times, so minus four, the one in the middle, so minus four gamma four. Then we have here again, minus four, the gamma matrix in the middle, gamma four. And then we have plus four times, we lower the index and it is renamed as gamma mu. So we end up with zero, which is precisely uh, what we wanted to show, right? So part 2G, we're going to show uh, indeed that, well, that that expression is equal to zero. So now comes the next part. So what's this G, what's this J? I, J, so that's my bad. It was not G, it was J. I mean, I guess it doesn't matter too much, but it is J, okay. Now comes part K, 2K. So here we have sigma alpha beta, sigma mu nu, sigma alpha beta, and we want to show that this is minus four sigma mu nu. So again, let's just plug everything in. So I over two, uh, gamma alpha, gamma beta, minus gamma beta, gamma alpha, i over 2, gamma mu, gamma nu, minus gamma nu, gamma mu, i over 2, and then gamma alpha, gamma beta, minus gamma beta, gamma alpha. Okay, so let's multiply all of this through, so we get minus i over 8, factor of gamma alpha, gamma beta, gamma mu, gamma nu, 
So I'm first going to multiply these two parentheses and leave the other one be because I don't want to multiply too much at once or else I will make mistakes. Then we get minus gamma alpha, gamma beta, gamma nu, gamma mu, minus gamma uh, beta, that's supposed to be a beta, gamma alpha, gamma mu, gamma nu, then plus gamma beta, gamma alpha, gamma nu, gamma mu. And all of this multiplied by gamma alpha, gamma beta, minus gamma beta, gamma alpha. Okay, so now uh, there isn't really anything we can simplify yet, so we just need to multiply through again. So this is equal to minus i over 8. And then we have gamma alpha, gamma beta, gamma mu, gamma nu. And now we multiply times gamma alpha, gamma beta, minus the same thing, alpha, beta, mu, nu, beta, alpha. Okay, so that is the first part. So now we just multiply it through by this. So now we get minus gamma alpha, gamma beta, gamma nu, gamma mu, gamma alpha, gamma beta, and then we have, maybe I'll just write it down here, minus alpha, beta, nu, mu, beta, alpha. But actually, there is already a minus sign in front, so we end up with a positive sign. So this is positive. Okay, so now we multiply this one as well. So then we have minus gamma, beta, alpha, mu, nu, alpha, beta, and then the other one, beta, alpha, mu, nu, beta, alpha. Okay, let me just check that the signs are correct, minus and then plus, yes. So then we have one more. So then we have plus, beta, alpha, nu, mu, alpha, uh, <laughs> beta, minus, gamma, beta, gamma alpha, gamma nu, gamma mu, gamma beta, gamma alpha. Oh my god, okay. Whew. Now let's see, we have here, let's see, here we have beta and beta with three gammas in the middle. Now we have seen how we can deal with that. Um, let me see, I have my notes here on the, on the side, you can check yours. When we have three in the middle, our result is minus two times the gammas that are in the middle with the order reversed. So we get gamma alpha and then minus two, so minus two, gamma alpha, gamma nu, gamma mu. So that is the first one. So this comes from this, right? So let's see. Gamma alpha, then all those, and I'm missing still gamma alpha. So gamma alpha. Whew. Okay, so that's the first part. Then we have this. So what can we do here? Here we have alpha and alpha. So we get minus gamma beta, and then alpha with two gammas in the middle, that gives us four times eta mu nu, right? That is part G of what we saw. Then we have gamma beta, right? We used this, 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 this. Okay, then we have plus gamma beta, and here again we have this alpha, so we get minus two times the three matrices in the middle in reversed order. So we get gamma beta, gamma nu, and gamma mu. Um, just let me double check. So we have gamma beta here, and those are in reversed order. Okay, then we have this part. So that part, let's see, we have the alpha here. So we get plus gamma beta, then we have two in the middle, which gives us four eta with the indices of the ones that are in the middle, so nu mu. And then we have still gamma beta. And finally, we have this part, which gives us minus and gamma beta. And here we have alpha alpha with three in the middle, so that means minus two, which gives us plus two, and gamma 
Beta, Gamma Mu, Gamma Nu. Phew. Okay, so let's continue. I told you you were going to come out of this mastering these gamma matrices. So minus i over 8. And now let's see. Okay, so now from the first part. Here we have gamma beta and beta. So we have to take the result where we have three matrices in between. So that is part G. So we get gamma alpha and then the matrix in between times minus two and the order reversed. So this time it is alpha, nu, mu. Then we have this. Here we have minus gamma alpha and then beta beta with two in between. When we have two, but what we got is four times eta with the indices of what is in, in the middle. And then we have a leftover gamma alpha. Then we have this thing right there. In that case, we have minus, let's see, gamma alpha and then gamma beta beta with three in the middle. So we get minus two gamma alpha, gamma mu, gamma nu. Then we have this one where we have gamma alpha and then gamma beta with two in the middle. So that means four eta nu mu and then still a gamma alpha in the end. And then we have this thing right here, which gives us minus gamma beta. And then we have alpha and alpha with two in the middle. So four times eta mu nu. And there is still a gamma beta at the end. Then we have plus gamma beta. And then we have alpha and alpha with three in the middle. So that means minus two gamma beta, gamma nu, gamma mu, right? I'm reversing the order here. Okay. And then, whew, then we have, um, so this is the last one that I did. Now comes gamma beta and then alpha, alpha with two in the middle. So four times eta nu mu, and then gamma beta, and then minus gamma beta, and then alpha alpha with three in the middle. So minus two gamma beta gamma mu gamma nu. Whew, okay, what can we do with this? So minus i over eight, that isn't <laughs> a problem at all. Then we have alpha alpha. So we get minus eight, right? Because the gamma alpha gamma alpha, gamma nu gamma mu. Okay, then we have minus gamma alpha gamma alpha. So we get minus 16 eta mu nu. Then we have plus 2 times 4, 8 gamma mu gamma nu. All right, so that's the first line. I'm going to make that smaller. Now we have plus 4 times eta nu mu times four, because there's gamma alpha, gamma alpha, so 16. Now that's the first one. Then we have minus 16 eta mu nu, right? Because gamma beta, gamma beta is four. Then we have minus eight, gamma beta, gamma beta is four again. Gamma nu, gamma mu. Whew, guys, this is, <sighs> okay. Then, Let's see, wait, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So on, only one line remaining. Then we have gamma beta, gamma beta. So that's four. So 16 eta nu mu minus or rather plus eight gamma mu gamma nu. Jesus. Okay, I, I hope I did this correctly. Otherwise, it would, would be really, really, really sad. So I have minus 16 mu nu plus 16 nu mu, but the metric is anti-symmetric. So eta mu nu, right? Eta mu nu is equal to eta nu mu. Um, if, if you don't re remember, just uh, draw the actual matrix, right? It only has elements in the diagonal. So it is, of course, symmetric. So that means that uh, this part will cancel out this and this will cancel out this. And then we have minus eight nu mu, minus eight nu mu and eight. Okay, so we get minus i over eight times 16 gamma mu gamma nu and then minus 16 
gamma nu, gamma mu. Whew. So what we have here, we can factor out the 16 and we can write this as minus and then we have let's see this is 1 8 is 1 over 4 times 16 times 1 over 2 or rather i over 2 and then we have gamma mu gamma nu minus gamma nu gamma mu and i wrote it like this because now it is very apparent that we have minus 4 sigma mu nu jesus okay this was a long one but we did it we have now shown what we want to show that where oh my god here sigma alpha beta when you have a sandwich of sigmas of the same index and another one in the middle you get this that one in the middle times minus four and you can see why these are useful uh, because they come into play sometimes when you're calculating more complex um, situations, so it is nice to skip a few steps. I mean, imagine if we hadn't known what we knew about parts F and E, for example, of this section. Let's now go for two. Uh, we just did um, we just did K, so now comes L. So two L. We only have two more in this section. Two L. This would give us sigma, alpha, beta gamma 5 gamma mu sigma alpha beta this is equal to zero so that is what we now wish to prove so um i guess the easiest way of going about this is noticing first that gamma 5 and the sigmas commute right we we saw that at the beginning of this problem so we know that gamma five i mean i at the beginning of the video i don't really know when it, i'm going crazy <laughs> so alpha and beta this commutes not anti but regular commute so that means that we can rewrite this expression as sigma now alpha beta but with the gamma five in front so gamma five okay so gamma five alpha beta and then gamma mu sigma alpha beta now if only we had an expression for you know what happens when we have a sigma sandwiched between a, a, a gamma sandwiched between sigmas well actually we do we know that this is zero so zero there we go easy peasy now we can go for the last part in section two which is to j this part is sigma alpha beta gamma 5 sigma alpha beta this is equal to 12 gamma 5 so this is what we now wish to prove but fortunately for us this is very easy because we know that gamma 5 and the sigmas commute so we can write this as gamma 5 times sigma alpha beta times sigma alpha beta and we know that sigma alpha beta sigma alpha beta is 12 right we saw this uh, previously in, in this very video and so this gives us just 12 gamma 5 so there we go <laughs> super easy barely an inconvenience so now we are ready to go for part three so part three let's go a now we're going to be proving a lot of uh, trace properties now what is the trace you may be wondering well the trace is simply the sum of the of the elements in the diagonal of a matrix that's basically what it is and there are a few important trace uh, properties that you should know so the trace of a plus b right is the same as the trace of a plus the trace of b all right and you also should know that the trace of let's say some constant c times a is equal to c times the trace of a and finally um, another important one is that the the trace is cyclic so the trace of a b c is the same as the trace of c a b okay um so you can you can basically move them around the border and it's still the same and that of course makes sense because you are adding up the diagonal elements so it doesn't matter which one is in which position so that's all right okay so now let's go for part a so the trace of gamma mu 
So this we can now use um, something very important and that is the fact that gamma 5 squared is equal to 1. So we can write this as gamma mu times gamma 5 squared. So gamma 5, gamma 5. But we know that gamma 5 and gamma mu anti-commute. So this means that the trace, this is minus gamma 5, gamma mu, gamma 5. And we can pull the minus sign to outside of the trace. So this will be equal to minus, right? Because we can take a constant outside. Okay, but now we could have done a different thing. We could have started out right here and used the cyclic property. So just moved the gamma five to the first position, which gives us that the trace, uh, the trace of gamma five, gamma mu, gamma five. So both of those things are equivalent. Right? These two expressions are completely equivalent. So we have a number that has to be equal to minus itself. And there's only one number that satisfies that, that is zero. So this is uh, how you prove that the trace of any of the four gamma mu matrices is indeed zero. Now in part B, I had a little bit of a typo. I forgot to write a four in front. So I'm going to make sure that we <laughs> prove the correct version. So uh, part B here, part B, we have to prove that the trace of gamma mu, gamma nu, is equal to four times eta mu nu. So the way to prove this is to try to get to the Clifford algebra once again, so that we can get the trace of the metric. So what we will do is say, okay, so the trace of gamma mu, gamma nu, right? What we can do is say, all right, but let's also add something else. So we can also say, okay, let's add the same thing. So trace of gamma mu, gamma nu, so that we have twice this trace, but now we divide by one half, right? So we have two times a trace divided by one half, right? So we basically multiplied and divided by two. So nothing weird going on but we can now use the cyclic property of the trace. So we can write this one as the trace of gamma nu, gamma mu. I am not anti-commuting them. I am using a property of the traces. That's very important for you to consider. So let me rewrite that. So this is now the trace of gamma nu, gamma mu. And now I can use the property of the trace that I can now add them together inside of a trace. So trace of gamma mu, gamma nu plus gamma nu, gamma mu. All right, now what is that? That is exactly the Clifford algebra expression, right? So that's two eta mu nu. Okay, so this thing is going to be one half times two. I can take the eta outside, why? Because that is simply a number. It is the mu nu element of, of the matrix, but it's not a matrix itself. It is now multiplied by the identity matrix. Keep in mind, we have always, we are in four by four dimensions all the time. We are just not always writing it down because we will have to write it down every single time. But every multiplication here has an implicit four by four unity matrix. So in the end, we are left with the trace of the four by four unity matrix. But what is the trace of the four by four unity matrix? It is four because you are adding up one, 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 and one. So we get, well, these twos cancel out and we get four eta mu nu, which is exactly what we wanted. Okay, so that is, there we go. So that's part B. Now part C is a little bit longer. So actually I don't really feel like hopping it. <laughs> so let's just move it. So we want to now prove that. Well, um, the logic here is going to be very much the same. So we are going to want to use the Clifford algebra as well and hopefully then use it to break out of the trace basically because we don't really know what the trace of just like one or, or two matrices may be actually of one we do but not of more so we will try to use that so what we will do is just take the trace of gamma mu gamma nu gamma rho gamma sigma so this is part 3c and we will begin just commuting them. So we want to now basically compare what happens when we 
on one side commute all those and then compare it with just using the cyclic property of the trace. We are going to use both. So let's go step by step. So this is the trace of gamma mu gamma nu. Sorry, uh, we have it written down down here. So gamma mu gamma nu. And now instead of this, we commute them or rather anti commute them using the Clifford algebra. So that means two eta rho sigma and then minus gamma sigma gamma rho. And we have to take the trace of all of that. Now we know that we can separate the trace. So we have trace of gamma mu gamma nu times two eta rho sigma, which we can take outside of the trace because it is simply a number. And then we have minus the trace of gamma mu gamma nu gamma rho gamma uh, sigma. Uh, sorry, no, no, no. It is uh, gamma mu, gamma nu, gamma sigma, gamma rho. There it is. I said it wrong. Now, what about this first trace? But notice we have the trace of gamma mu, gamma nu. What is that? It is four times eta mu nu. So what we have here is four times eta mu nu. So four times eta mu nu. Okay. So now we need to see what this thing is. So let's solve it and then plug it in. So that is trace of gamma mu, gamma nu, gamma sigma, gamma rho. So let's do the same thing. So now let's say, okay, trace of gamma mu. And now I anti commute these two. So I get two eta nu sigma minus rho sigma rho nu rho. Sorry, gamma. <laughs> Okay, the video has been long. I apologize. I meant gamma, of course. And then we have still a lingering gamma rho. All right. So now we just multiply through just like before. So this thing is equal to the uh, two eta nu rho trace of gamma mu gamma rho. And then we have minus the trace of gamma mu gamma sigma gamma nu gamma rho okay so now again we take this we just go there ah by the way we can still write down the fact that this is four times eta uh, four times eta mu rho okay using the result from the previous problem just like we did uh, right there. So now this trace of gamma mu, gamma sigma, gamma nu, gamma rho, I will one more time uh, anti-commute them. So I get uh, the trace of two eta mu sigma minus gamma sigma, gamma mu. And then we have gamma nu gamma rho still multiplying. So now we just multiply through again as before. So two eta mu sigma trace of gamma nu gamma rho minus that does not look like minus minus. Um, that would be the trace of gamma sigma gamma mu gamma nu gamma rho. Okay. Whew. So notice now that what we have here is almost the same as what we have at the beginning. So at the beginning, we had mu nu rho sigma. Now we have sigma mu nu rho. So basically, we cycled through, right? So basically, we had A, B, C, D. And now we have D, A, B, C. We pushed the D all the way to the beginning. That's what we just did by anti-commuting over and over and over again. All right. So we know that we can use the cyclic property of the trace, right? The trace of A, B, C, D is the same as the trace of D, A, B, C. OK, so that means that this trace that we have right here is exactly the same as mu nu rho sigma. So mu nu rho sigma. And why is this relevant? 
because let's take a look at the equation that we now have. So plugging this all back in, we have that the trace of gamma mu, gamma nu, gamma uh, is rho or sigma first? Rho. Gamma rho, gamma sigma, <laughs> Jesus, gamma sigma is equal to. And now first we have this, so 4 times 2, let's write it as 2 times 4 eta mu nu, eta rho sigma. I do it like this because this 2 is going to cancel out, so <laughs> that way I don't bother uh, rewriting later. But of course it makes no difference. Minus now this trace, which is what we have in red. So minus 2 times 4 eta nu sigma eta mu rho and then minus this other trace so minus minus so it is positive so we get plus now what we have here so two times four eta mu sigma why four because i am plugging this in eta nu rho that's the result from the previous problem and then minus the trace of gamma mu gamma nu gamma rho gamma sigma so notice that we have the same thing here and here so we can add it on both sides so this thing goes away here and here we have two times so now we divide by two right that, that was the whole point of what we were doing now we divide by two there we go and we got rid of it and now we can see that this is the result that we were looking for uh, let me just bring this thing down so that we can compare just to make sure right so you guys believe me so that trace is 4 times eta mu nu rho sigma, there we go, then minus 4 eta nu sigma and then mu rho, they are in different order but the order doesn't matter, it's the same, and then 4 times eta mu sigma nu rho. So there we go, it is completely correct, uh, part 2c is now done. So now we want to see the trace of gamma 5. So let's go for that. We want to show that the trace of gamma 5 is 0. So trace of gamma 5. So let's use the same trick that we did in part A. We need to find something that anti-commutes with gamma 5. So we can choose gamma 0. Why? Because it is also, if you square it, you get 1. So it is very easy to get in here. So we can say trace of gamma 5, gamma 0, gamma 0, right? So we haven't changed anything, now we anti-commute it, so we get minus trace of gamma 0, gamma 5, gamma 0, and now we can compare this if we had used the cyclic property, just cyclic, not anti-commuting, so we get trace of gamma 0, gamma 5, gamma 0, so you can see they are the same, one is positive, one is negative, for them to be the same, the trace has to be 0, so there we go. Okay, part E. So here we have a trace of gamma 5, gamma mu, gamma nu. So note that here we also want to prove that it is zero, so that makes us think that, well, perhaps we want to do a similar approach. So here we have gamma 5, gamma mu, gamma nu. So let's again produce something in there, but this time we know that gamma alpha, gamma alpha is equal to 4, so let's say 1 fourth and now we, we put this in there. So gamma 5, so that's 5, and then gamma alpha, gamma alpha, gamma mu, gamma nu. Okay, so that's what we now want to do. Okay, um, so the, the whole point of doing this is that we want to use some of the properties that we showed in part 2, right? So we show that gamma alpha, and then when we have in the middle some of those mu's and nu's, um, you can get the metric, right? And actually, let me perhaps go ahead and find it for you so that you know what I'm talking about. Uh, part two, there it is. So, let's see. So, in part two, we saw that if we have right, a matrix, in this case, we have gamma alpha instead of gamma mu, and we have two matrices in the middle, and our mu's, in this case alpha, are in different positions, one up and one down, we get four times the metrics, the metric, and that's what we would really like. So something we can do is use the fact that gamma 5 anti-commutes with all gammas, right, with all four gammas. So we get minus one-fourth trace of 
gamma alpha, gamma five. And then we have gamma alpha, gamma mu, gamma nu. Okay, and what we would really like is for our other gamma alpha to be on the other side of this, because that way we could produce something like this. We want one gamma alpha to be on one side, one to be on the other, and then just sandwich them in the middle. Right, and again, the indices can be lowered or, or uh, high, high or low, right? It doesn't matter, contravariant or covariant position, either way. So here we can now use the fact uh, that the, the trace is cyclic. So we move the gamma alpha to the end. So one fourth trace of gamma five. And then we have gamma alpha, gamma mu, gamma nu gamma alpha, and now we have the desired position, right? the, the desired um, grouping here. So for that reason, we now know that, that that is going to be, I think it is four times eta mu nu, right? That's what we saw before. But before uh, they were in the uh, high position, right? In the contravariant position, that, that's why it was like that. Now, well, it is lowered. So anyways, we got it. Now we can pull it outside. So we get minus eta mu nu times the trace of gamma five. But we know that the trace of gamma five is zero. So it is all zero. So there we go. That was also very nice. And um, whoops, I meant to move it. Now we have trace of gamma five, gamma mu, gamma nu, gamma rho, gamma sigma. Phew. So part F may look a little bit tricky but it's not really all that bad. So what we'll do now is rely heavily as usual on what we have seen in the past. So notice that we have gamma five and mu nu rho sigma in other gammas, right? So we have the trace of gamma five, gamma mu, gamma nu, gamma rho, gamma sigma. So what happens if any of these mu nu rho sigma are repeated? Right, let's say that one of them is repeated. So let's say, I don't know, mu is equal to nu, for example. So in that case, this is one repeated. In that case, we get gamma five, gamma mu, gamma mu, and then gamma rho, and then gamma five. Okay, but we know what gamma mu times gamma mu is. Now here we are not multiple, this is not an implicit sum like the case for of gamma mu, gamma mu, right? What we have here is basically like when we had gamma one, gamma one, for example, which in this case gives us minus one. So this thing right here is either going to be minus one or one, depending on whether mu is zero or i. But either way, this is a number which we can pull outside. So we get plus or minus in the front. And then we have gamma five and two more gammas, which is exactly this case that we just saw. So this is zero. So if there is one repeated, then that thing is zero. What happens if there are two repeated? So let's say that mu is equal to nu is equal to rho. So in that case, we have the trace of gamma five, gamma mu, gamma mu, gamma mu, gamma sigma. So here again, two of the moves, they cancel out, they give us plus or minus, depending on which case it is. And then we have gamma five and two more, which is zero. And if they are all the same, then we get, uh, so three repeated, uh, then we get uh, that this is the trace of gamma five, gamma mu, gamma mu, gamma mu, gamma mu. So we would get here either plus one or minus one, either plus one or minus one. So in the end we get plus one and we get trace of five, uh, gamma five, which is zero. So if there is any repeated index, we get zero. So we need there to be some zero, one, two, three, right? So that's what we need. Okay, so let's um, just take a, li a little bit of a look at wh what's going on. So let's say that we have trace of gamma five and then gamma zero, gamma one, gamma two, gamma three. So here we can take the gamma five. There are a few concerns regarding what um, what exact rep representation you're using. Um, but if you use something like I gamma zero, gamma one, gamma two, gamma three, then you have times gamma zero, gamma one, gamma two, 
gamma 3. And now we can anti-commute a little bit. So once, twice, three times. So we get trace of i gamma 0 squared, which is 1. And then we get gamma 1, gamma 2, gamma 3, gamma 1, gamma 2, gamma 3. We can anti-commute uh, this gamma 1 once, twice. So we get a plus. Uh, here we had 1, 2, 3, so we needed a negative sign. Then we have, so minus i, the trace of, well, now we get gamma 1 squared, which gives us another minus sign, so this is positive. And then we have gamma 2, gamma 3, gamma 2, gamma 3. So we anti-commute it, we get another minus sign, so i trace of gamma 2, gamma 2, gamma 3, gamma 3. And here, uh, both of those gives us, give us minus 1, so we get minus i times the trace of, and this time we have 1, so simply the identity matrix, the 4 by 4 identity matrix, so this is minus 4i. Oof, okay, so that is what happens if we are in the case epsilon 0, 1, 2, 3, but what happens if we are in a, in a different case? Well, in any other case, we can simply get to this case by using a permutation, right? So for example, if our initial case is trace of gamma 5, gamma 1, gamma 0, gamma 2, gamma 3, then you can do one permutation, change the position of these two, but add a minus sign. And if your difference were two positions, then you do two permutations, add two minus signs, so plus. So basically what we have here is that Right, that trace, right, the trace of gamma 5, gamma mu, gamma nu, gamma rho, gamma sigma, this we know is minus 4i if there are no repeated indices and we have an even permutation, right, or it is going to be plus 4 if there is an odd amount of permutation. So that means we need here epsilon and now it depends on how exactly you define it. I'm going to this time say mu, nu, rho, sigma. Right here we can define this to be 1, right? The epsilon mu, nu, rho, sigma uh, to be 1 for uh, even permutations, minus 1 for odd permutations, 0 when there's any repeated ones. And sometimes uh, you, uh, you can go for the uh, notation where it is upstairs when you are really focusing on the tensor aspect here. We just care about the fact that, um, right, there's no multiplication here with anything else. So you just care if it's one minus one, depending on the re relation between those uh, indices. So no need to worry about it particularly much there. So that is part F. Now, finally, we go for the last part of this problem uh, of this video, which has been very, 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 very long. So now we go for this. So the trace of an odd number of these a slash vectors. So we have 2n plus 1 vectors. Now keep in mind that a slash right, in general is some a vector, so a, a mu, and you multiply this, sorry, by gamma mu. So what this means is that we have a bunch of numbers, a mu is just a component of the a mu vector, so we get here, I don't know, a mu 1 and a, I don't know, maybe you, you call it nu 2 and you know, a bunch of them, depends on how many you have, but an odd amount. And then you have in here just all your remaining gamma, so gamma mu, gamma nu, gamma, I don't know, rho, gamma lambda, gamma, I don't know, however many of these you have, but of course an, an, an odd amount, so also, I don't know, like gamma sigma or something, just to make sure that uh, we have an odd amount here written down. So we have some odd amount. So we will now wish to know what exactly this is. So we will stick to the notation of the a slash because that is a good way of just writing in general, right? So when we say a1 slash, blah, 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 all the way to a slash 2n plus one, we're basically saying there's 2n plus one gamma matrices here. And we don't have to worry about coming up with 2n plus one indices, right? And this is also a way to just write it in general, because how are you going to write the 2n plus 1th index if you are calling them mu, nu, rho, sigma, right? W which one is 
to n plus one is it going to be chi? I don't know. <laughs> so let's just do it like this. So now let's this uh, we want to show that it's equal to zero. So again, let's use our beautiful gamma five trick. So we just multiply here by one, which is gamma five squared, and we keep everything else b. So a slash to n plus one, and now we commute one of our gamma fives all the way to the end all the way to the end. So that means that we commuted an odd amount of times, so we end up with a minus outside, right? We have to commute it 2n plus 1 times, which is odd, so it's always going to be um, an odd amount, so this will always be minus. So trace of gamma 5, a1 slash, blah, 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 all the way to a slash 2n plus 1, gamma 5. Okay, and now that we have this, we can also just use the cyclic property, right? So we can use the cyclic property. So this has to be equal to minus. So this is trace um, of gamma five, a one slash blah, 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 all the way to a slash two n plus one. And we have an additional gamma five here now, the one that we cycled, but gamma five squared is one. So now we see that this and this have to be equal. So as we have done many times in the past, this is equal to zero. So there we go. We have finished a rather long problem. We have many, many, we solved many, 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 many problems. I hope that, you know, this was useful to you. Uh, I really think that this will give you some tools to uh, handle yourself when doing these sorts of problems. So yeah, let me know if there's any questions. And if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like, comment and subscribe and maybe even consider checking out my Patreon. It takes a really long time to prepare these videos and it really helps me just continue to pump them up if there's some sort of um, support there. So I'll see you in another lecture. Thank you very much for watching.